out here. Oh. Oh, I'm recording already. Okay. Hang on. Oh. Okay, name that song and the movie that made it famous. Um, so today we're looking at uh, geometric sequences and series, um, focusing mostly on the series part of it. Uh, the last video we talked about sequences and uh, one of the formulas uh, we got there was TN, so you might want to review that before you watch this video. Um, so I switch over to sharing um, my notebook here. Um, it's there. Share that. Okay, there we go, and I'm going to turn off my video here. Uh, okay, so um, we're looking at uh, geometric uh, series, and um, this uh, uh, builds on um, the sequences we talked about in the last video, uh, where we gave you a formula, uh, Tn equaled, I might want to look that up, and that was trying to determine what uh, uh, the various terms would be in a, in, in a sequence, and you had to know n, you had to know the first term a, and you had to know the common ratio r here. So um, if you look at this pattern, um, Sn, so sum, sum of um, um, terms uh, means to add them. So adding term one, term two, term three, term four, all the way out to term n. And um, what we're looking at here is what would our first term be here? Well, in a geometric pattern, um, the first term is always denoted to be a. Um, and then basically we're going to be multiplying by a constant number every time, which we gave the, the variable r to. So the second term would be a r, so a times r. And then the second term, uh, sorry, the third term would be the second term times r. So that'd be a r r r r um, r a r squared. And then times another r, so r to the three. And you notice that the power on the r is one behind the term number. So for term four, it's r to the three. And for term three, it's r to the two. So I guess the big question is sort of what, what did we learn last day was what would the last term in this pattern be? So when you take a second and write down what you think tn would be. Well, tn is the last term in the pattern, which would be the first term a multiplied by the common ratio r. And you would be doing that a whole bunch of times, but the number of times you would do that would always be one less than the term number you're looking for. So this would be n minus one. And from your notes from last day, you should have this in your notes, ar to the n minus one. So what we're being asked to do is add all these numbers up and find out what the, the answer would be here. So I'm gonna um, create a formula here for us. Um, and once again, you don't need to know the derivation of the formula, but I always like to teach it because I just, I hate showing formulas that come out of nowhere and people are like, okay, this is just like magic or something. And it's not magic. Um, I mean, if I can understand it, I'm sure you guys can. Um, so let's say you're looking at the sum of an, a geometric series. So I'm going to rewrite this out. A plus AR plus AR to the two. And this would keep on going. And our very last term we're going to write over here would be AR to the N minus one. So that's just what we wrote, wrote above. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract um, r times Sn. So basically what we just wrote there, but timesing every term by r, and then subtracting the two rows from each other. So if I was to take this first number, a, and times it by r, I, I would get a r. So I'm going to subtract um, uh, minus here, oopsie, minus. And a minus. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stagger it. So a times r would be a r. Um, and then if I took this term and times it by r, I get a r squared. So I'm going to minus a r squared. And then I would just keep doing that all the way over. And then if I times this term by r, I'm just going to show the math for this, a r to the n minus 1 times r to the 1, then I, I would multiply the common basis r and I would add the exponents. So that would be a r to the n minus one plus one, which is a r to the n. So that actually would be um, one more term um, over here, a r to the n. Almost had a room there. Now the term before that one would have been a r to the n minus one. Now if I take these two rows and I subtract them from each other, I get um, the sum of all the terms in the series minus r times the sum of all the terms in the series. And what you would notice is that all these sort of middle terms, the ones stuck in between, they would all cancel. They would all get knocked out here. But you'd be left with your first number, which is a. 
And then you over here, you would have zero minus a r to the n. So that's that. Now what I'm trying to do is write a formula for s n. So I'm going to factor the s n out, and that will give me with one minus r times that equals a minus a r to the n. And then if I divide everything by the one minus r, I'll have a formula for s n now. A minus a r to the n all over one minus r. Now I could tidy this up a little bit by factoring the a out. It leaves me, when I start plugging numbers in, a bit easier to do that. And then this would all be over one minus r. And then notice I can't, I can't cancel these one minus r's because the top one, the r is being raised to the n. So they're not actually identical to each other. So I can't do that. Um, so that's that's one formula I think would be would be really useful to know. So I'm going to put a, a red box around that. So that's the sum of all the terms in the geometric pattern. Um, but uh, you have to know the a value. So for this formula, you'd have to know um, the a value, um, the r value, and the n value. So you you, you basically have to know uh, ran. Right, you have to know the ram. Now, um, if we take that formula a little bit, just do a little tweak to it, we're gonna just gonna mix it up a bit here. So I'm gonna go back to the um, initial formula I had here, and I write it up here. A minus A R to the N, all over one minus R. Now, um, this, this part right here, this, this A R to the N minus one, um, that is actually, we got that from doing this math right here. That makes sense. So if I rewrote that, I'm just cool that for room here. A minus a r to the n minus. Sorry, that's that's uh, that's not right. Um, a minus a r to the n minus one times r all over one minus r. Um, then what I can notice here is that this pattern right here, I'm just going to use a highlighter here, this part right here, that's actually your last term. That, that's your TN term. That's what your TN term is. So I could um, rewrite this as, I use purple here for my final answer, it's also equal to A minus L, we'll use L for our last term, uh, times R, all over one minus r. And so this formula here would also work to find the sum of any geometric series, uh, but in this case you you would have to know um, um, lar, or however you remember it. So I guess the second formula you wouldn't actually have to know the n value, you wouldn't have to know how many terms there are, but you would have to know the last term in the pattern. And for the first formula um, you would have to know the common ratio r, the first term and the number of terms, but you wouldn't have to know the last term. So that would save us um, some time depending on the question that's given to us. So generally in this chapter, you're gonna be choosing between this formula or that formula, but you'll also have to know the TN formula from uh, the last lesson uh, for the term, how to find the term in a geometric sequence. But these two formulas are how to find the sum of any geometric sequence series. Okay, so our first question, let's go down here. Um, it says, find the sum of the geometric series 2 plus 6 plus 18 plus 54, and then going all the way on to um, 1,458. So there's obviously a lot of terms that exist here, and it seems that every time we move up a term, we're multiplying by a common, a common number here. So why don't we write down what we know about the question, like as far as the letters go. So let's just see, do we, do we know A? Let's write maybe green stuff for what we know. So our a value is two, that's our first term. Uh, we know our common ratio. Um, if we do uh, six divided by two, that's three. Um, if we do 18 divided by six, that's also three. And then 54 um, divided by 18, that is also three. So it seems pretty clear that our common ratio would be three here. Now, um, the number of terms is something I don't really know right now. I'm not really sure what that would be because um, I, don't, I don't have anything below it to tell me this number 1,450, what term that is. Now, I could sit on my calculator and just type multiply by three a whole bunch of times, but maybe I don't even need to do that. Maybe it's, it's, there's no really need to do that. 
Um, now, as far as uh, L, um, my last term, if I use green here, do, do I actually know my last term? Well, my last term in the series is 1,458. So I know three of the four uh, letters. And what I'm being asked to do is to sum this series, this geometric series. So this SN right up here, that is the sum of the n terms of a geometric series. And we can see from the first formula, um, we would have to know the n value, but the second formula we don't. So we know A, R, and L. So we can definitely use the second formula here. So this would be A minus L, R, all over one minus R. And so this would be the sum of whatever number of terms are in there. And I don't, I don't even need to know that. So two um, minus the last term, which is 1,458. Uh, multiply that though by the common ratio of three. And then on the bottom, we would have one minus three. So on the bottom, we get negative two, which might seem a bit weird, but the top number is also gonna be negative here because this is two minus, and then I have um, 1,458. 458 times 3, uh, which is 4,374. So I'm just going to finish the rest of the calculation off with my calculator. So I'm going to go 2 minus that number, and then I need to divide that by negative 2. And that gives me 2,186. So even though I don't know how many terms are in this series, I, I would know that the sum of the series is 2,186. Um, so if you're going to try to get the to um, use the first formula, the, um, the the one we have right here, um, you would have to know how many terms there are. But you actually can do that. And in fact, the next question we we come to, we're going to have to do that. We we need to figure this out. Okay. So the question now says, using this pattern of numbers, can we write a sigma notation for this? Dun, dun, so sigma notation um, has this uh, interesting symbol given to it here. So sum of the terms. And then over here in front of the sigma will always be the formula we're going to work with. Down at the bottom is the lower limit of summation. And at the top is the upper limit of summation. So just a reminder of that, the lower limit is the first number you're going to plug in. And the upper limit is the last number you're going to plug in here. And I would I would really encourage you to use TM equals AR to the N minus one and see if you can create a formula using the geometric term formula. So our first term here uh, we said was two. Our common ratio is three. And, and then we do N minus one. Now, the n will depend on which term you're looking for, of course, but let's say you're looking for the first term. Well, if it's the first term, then you would put 1 in, because that would be t1, so n would be 1. So let's just see if that would work, see if that would give us the right number. So t1 would be 2 times 3 to the 1 minus 1, which is 0. And a number raised to 0 is 1, so this is 2. So that does work. And if you plug in the next number, you would get 2 times 3 to the 1, uh, which is six and so on and so on and so on. So this formula really works quite nicely for us. So I'm gonna make this um, two multiplied by three. Now you can use N minus one. I know the book uses K sometimes, but I'm gonna show you, you can just mix it up and you know just be wild and crazy. Um, and I'm gonna go M minus one here. Now, because I chose M, this has to be an M now. If I chose N, it would have been an N. If I chose K, it would have been a K. Um, but now I need that to be a one when I start. So that's gonna be a one here. Now my upper limit of summation, that's a bit trickier now because I need to know when would I stop um, this inputting of numbers. Um, and the only way to know that is to really know what term 1,458 is. So I'm gonna use my formula here. I'm gonna say, well, um, 1,000, let's over here, 1,458 would be equal to the formula two times three to the N minus one. And what I would try to do here is solve for the value of, of of n, or maybe let's make it m, I guess now. Um, so I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So I take 1,458, I divide that by 2, um, which is 729, which is a power of 3, actually. But you know, you don't need to memorize that. Um, and I'm going to log both sides here. So I'm going to um, log 729 equaling m minus 1 times the log of three 
So m would equal log of 7 to 9 all over the log of 3, and then we have to add 1. So using my calculator here, um, the log of that number um, divide by the log of 3, and then adding 1 gives me 7. So that means there's seven terms here, which means that n value, we could have figured that out in the, in the beginning, and n would have been seven. Um, so our upper limit here must be seven. And if you plug that in, um, that would work. Now, I should just clarify here, this is the number of terms. And remember, the number of terms is always equal to the upper limit minus the lower limit plus one. Now. The reason I, I knew it was seven on top is that I, I deliberately used a formula that made the lower limit one. So that means you'd have upper limit minus one plus one. But if, if you used some other formula where maybe the M didn't start at one, maybe it started at two, then the number on top, the upper limit would be a different number. And so you might wanna remember this formula to, to work with um, on that one. Okay, so um, next, next question here. So I'm gonna, um, uh, Let's see, we have to find the sum of the first 12 terms of the geometric series 4 minus 8 plus 16 minus and then dot, 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 dot. So the first 12 terms. So let's see which, which things you guys can work out here. The A value, um, the R value, uh, the N value, and the L value. I'm going to pause the, the video here for a second, um, but I'll let you guys uh, try that there. So let's see here. Okay, there we go. Um, so I think I'm still recording here. And um, our first term here would be four. Our common ratio would be negative two. Um, now our n value, um, now from the pattern, it actually seems to go on forever. It's sort of infinitely large. Um, but in this question, we're being asked to find the 12th term here. So our n value here would be would be 12. Sorry, some of the first 12 terms. So our last term would be 12th term. And in this question, we actually don't know um, the last number. So not knowing the last number uh, basically eliminates the second formula. So now I'm going to have to use the formula right here, if you look up top. So we had our two choices here. Um, the first one, we need to know RAN, and the second one, we need to know LAR. So I'm going to use this formula right here. Okay, so going back down. So I know that um, SN is equal to a one minus r to the n all over one minus r. And plugging our numbers in, four times one minus, now this is tricky here, this r value is negative two. So I gotta be careful how I do this, negative two. And I'm looking for the 12th, woo, 12th term. My computer just sort of fell down on me. Um, and then, that's going to be all over one minus negative two. So this, these negative signs can be tricky, 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 tricky. Um, now um, I'm going to just go and do this slowly here. So on the bottom, um, this would be one plus two. Then so that'd be three on the bottom because you're subtracting a negative number. And then you got to be really careful about the thing in brackets here. Um, the order of operations. Um, so within the brackets, you're doing one minus negative two to the twelfth power. So there's multiple operations there. And so we have to do our exponents first. So we're taking a negative number and we're raising it to an even power, which would make that number positive. But then we're minusing that number. So it still stays subtraction um, over here. So four and one minus two to the 12. So be careful you don't, Sometimes you'll, you'll see those two negatives. You might think, well, if I times a negative by a negative, it's gonna make it positive. But you actually have to deal with the power first. So that, that's gonna be tricky. So when you use your calculator, you might wanna use a bunch of brackets here for this, but um, let's just see if we get the same answer. Um, so four and then in brackets, uh, one minus two to the 12th power, close the bracket, divide it by three. And that gives us negative 5,400 and 
and 60. So that is um, the solution to that question. Um, I'm just going to pause the video one more time. Sorry, guys. I'm just seeing if it is actually. Um, yes, it is still recording. Good. OK. So I'm going to um, go back to that again. So here we go. So this um, last question here, uh, we've got uh, Sorry guys, I have a lot of people coming in to see me. Um, okay, so hopefully I'm back to recording. It looks like I'm recording again. Okay, so uh, one of our last questions here um, gives us a uh, sigma and asks us to uh, find the sum of the geometric series. So these questions, um, I always encourage students to write out at least the first three terms, just to make sure that you actually see um, what A is, what R is, and maybe what the last uh, last term would be here. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take the numbers here and plug them in. So my lower limit says plug negative 1 in. So T1 would be when I do that. And notice here that the bottom number, it does not correspond to the term numbers. When you use T1, you're inputting a value of negative 1. So your number of terms is not 10 here. It might look like it's a 10, but it's not. So term 1 uh, would be 5 uh, multiplied by 3 and then negative one plus one would be zero. So my first term would actually just be five. My second term um, would be five times three, and now I'd put in zero, so that would be to the one. So that's 15. So we're starting to see a pattern here, I think. I could probably guess what our next number would be. Um, now, oh, actually, sorry, that was a negative three, actually. So um, times negative three. So that's actually negative 15 negative 15. Um, and then we're going to do is find our next term, which is adding uh, 5 times negative 3. And now we're going to be putting in a value of 1. So that would be to the 2. So negative 3 squared is 9. Uh, 9 times 5 is 45. And I'm just going to show one more number just to kind of confirm what that little goof up I made there. Uh, negative 3, but now to the third power. So a negative raised to an odd power is negative times a positive is still negative. Um, so we're going to have we're going to have 3 to the 3 which is 27 and we're going to multiply that by 5 and so we're minusing 135. And this pattern seems to go plus minus plus minus plus minus all the way to the last term. So tn. So let's let's find our last term because right right now we actually know the a value. The a value is 5. It's our first term our common ratio where we're multiplying by negative three every time and that's why it's changing from negative to positive to negative to positive. Um, the end value, um, I don't know right away. I can get it pretty quick. And my last term, I don't know right away, but I can, I can still get it pretty quick. So I'm gonna put a, a question mark here right now because we don't know it right away without doing a bit of math here. So once again, there's, there's two formulas you can know. So if you know the n, you can, don't need to know the l. If you know the l, you don't need to know the n value. So I'm going to do um, number of terms. And in a sigma notation, that equals the upper limit of summation minus the lower limit of summation plus 1. So really, the number of terms would be 10 minus negative 1 plus 1 which is really equal to 10 plus 2, oh my goodness, um, which is going to be equal to, oh my goodness, what happened? Okay, it's going to be equal to 12. So I now know that the number of terms is 12. So my last term, I guess I, I could work that out. It might be quite large though. Um, 5 times negative 3, and there's going to be 12 terms now. So 12 plus 1 is 13. I think that's right, 12 plus one is 13. There we go, yes. Um, so, um, is that right? It doesn't seem right to me. There are 12 terms. So my, sorry guys, I'm just drawing a blank here. There's 12 terms, 12, it would be 13. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay, let's just find out that number. We, we can we can always verify this in a second. So, um, so I'm gonna go negative three to the power of 13 times five. Aye, aye, aye. 
uh, negative seven million nine hundred and seventy one thousand six hundred and fifteen. I think I'm right on that. So something's bothering me about that. But anyway, so I'm not sure I'm going to want to use that anyway. So I don't think it's even that important because using that number in there is going to make my formula really large here. So I'm going to use the formula that does not require um, the L value here. So I'm going to plug in these numbers in. So we know that SM, um, I guess it'd be the sum of the 12 terms, uh, would be equal to the A value uh, multiplied by one minus R to the N, which is 12, um, all over one minus R. So that would equal my first term, which is five, multiplied by one minus, there's this problem again, negative three to the 12, um, all over, one minus negative three. So once again, I got this uh, um, subtracting negative numbers, but subtracting negative numbers that are being raised to even powers. Oh my God. Um, so one, now I'm minusing negative raised to an even power, uh, it turns out to be positive. So three to the 12 is ginormous. Um, 531,441 all over um, one minus negative three, which is four. So um, let's just work that out. So five times, and in brackets, one minus that massive number, um, and then divide everything by four. So negative 664,000, 300. Okay, guys, sorry, I just uh, paused it. I was bothered by that first calculation I did up there. Um, what I made a mistake of is I plugged 13 in um, up here, because I, I always said there's 12 terms, so 12 plus 1 was 13. Um, but the upper limit of summation is actually the last number you plug in, which is 10. So if you do that, you get uh, 11 as the power, which gives you this as the last term. So that is the last term. So negative 885,735. And if you use the other formula, just did a quick check here. You can check my math if you want. Um, plug that into the formula, you get the same answer um, as that one there. Okay, so that kind of concludes the, the geometric uh, series part of the video. Um, I did, was gonna go over a thing called Pascal's triangle only. Uh, because I'm a nerd and um, I thought I would do some enrichment here, but please feel free to hit stop now if you're like, I've learned enough math and I don't care about learning other stuff. But uh, anyway, Pascal's triangle is a neat little um, uh, triangle pattern here. Um, we actually start off with um, uh, a one uh, and then we sort of bring down another one, get a one, one. Um, and then you, you kind of just keep doing this, keep bringing down ones. And then what you do is you, you add um, the two terms before to get the middle term here. So if one plus one would be two. So you actually have to add um, these two terms to get that number there. So I just keep bringing down the ones. So I get one and one. And then there'll be a number here and a number here. So what do you think those numbers would be? Well, it'd be um, three and three. And if you keep going, get one and then four and three plus three is six, and three plus one is four, and then one. So why don't you guys try one more row here, see what you think you would you would get here. So you bring down the one and a one, and then one plus four is five, five plus six is 10, uh, six plus 10 is, uh, so six, plus, six plus four is 10, and four plus one is five. And Pascal's row uh, just keeps on, rows just keep going down, down this kind of format. Um, we see this actually, this triangle quite useful in a lot of areas of math. Um, one of the big areas is if we take a binomial, like say A plus B, um, if you raise it to the zero, you get one. Uh, if you go A plus B to the first power, you get A plus B. If you do A plus B all squared, um, that gives you A squared plus um, 2AB plus B squared. And if you take um, a plus b and you cube it, um, you actually get a cubed plus three a squared b plus three a 
b squared plus b cubed. Now, um, what we notice here is that the numbers of the coefficients anyway. Um, that's a 1 and a 1. That's a 1 right there. That's a 1, a 2, and a 1. And then we have a 1, a 3, a 3, and a 1. And basically, no matter what the binomial is, if you raise it to an nth power, you're going to get one of the rows in Pascal's triangle. So this, this pattern is really a recursive um, type uh, sequence uh, where you need to know the numbers before um, to get the numbers after. Now, there is some math you can use in finite math um, where we use combinations, which is a formula called NCR, um, which you might learn if you go into university in your first year math program. You might take a finite math course. Um, I'll leave that to the instructors there to teach you that. Um, but there's some neat things about the triangle you might find um, kind of uh, kind of um, fascinating if you're a nerd like me once again. Um, once again, if I go to, uh, where is it here? Did I get rid of it? Pause this. So there's this um, link on uh, GeAlgebra um, that might be interesting. Um, all the way up here. Um, now, um, this pattern um, has lots of interesting numbers in it that besides using it for binomial expansion, um, you can uh, uh, see interesting patterns. But this, uh, you can kind of go to this site if you want to. I stopped sharing that one and then go to um, back to my one note here. And so I'm going to erase some of this um, stuff here. So let's get rid of some of all this stuff here. So some of the neat things um, in the in the pattern um, of uh, Pascal's triangle, um, sort of a famous uh, shape here, I'll make that larger, um, is if you look at the uh, first uh, row, you'll sort of, sort of first diagonal, I guess you could say, um, that's uh, that that's sort of your one one row, I guess, like all they're all ones down that row, and the next next row of diagonal here, um, that's. Uh, your counting numbers, so one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Uh, the next row here, uh, we call these your triangular numbers, and these are the number of do uh, dots you can use to create um, triangle. They're called triangles. So, using the three, um, you can have one, two, three. Now, if you go to six, you can go one, two, three, four, five, six, and ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Um, so that's that row, that diagonal is called our triangular numbers. Um, but what's really weird about the pattern? I, I just find the triangle just really creepy. That it sort of relates to so many different areas of math. Um, but one of them that's, that's interesting, I, I think, is if you look at just the rows themselves and, and what the numbers add to. So that's that's a one. Um, these numbers are two. This would be four. Um, this would be eight. Um, this here um, would be uh, 16. And if you keep going down this way, you'll, you'll see that every, every single row, um, uh, the numbers sum to a power of uh, 2. So the first one's just 2 to the 0, uh, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3, 2 to the 4, and, and so on. So that's, that's kind of that's weird. Um, and that's actually quite useful, by the way, in, in finite math and probability, um, uh, this sort of uh, set of numbers here. But once again, that's not our course. Um, but the idea of sequences is our course. So I, I kind of like to talk about this sequence of numbers. Um, another interesting thing that I think is really weird, um, and you might want to grab your calculator for this. And just on your calculator, I want you to type in um, 11 raised to the power of, um, let's say, 3. What's 11 raised to the power of, of 3? Try that. Okay. Um, so if you look at the first uh, number, it's just it's just a, a one, just a one there. Um, but if you just write these numbers side by side, that's eleven. Um, and if you write these numbers side by side, that's one twenty one. And if you write these numbers side by side, that's one hundred, sorry, one thousand three hundred and thirty one, uh, and one thousand four hundred, sorry, fourteen thousand six hundred and forty one. 
Um, I think it's interesting, but I'm getting tired. Um, okay, so here we go. So this is kind of neat. This this verse is 11 to the 0, um, 11 to the 1, 11 to the 2, and yep, 11 to the 3, 11 to the 4. Um, now, if you take a look at this row, this should be 11 to the power of 6. It's the power of 6. Um, but So why don't you type that in your calculator? Um, 11 to the power of 6. So I'm getting 1,771,561, which does not look like what I've got here. Um, but that's a 1, that's a 6, that's a 5. That's pretty sweet. So 1, 6, and 5. Now look at the tens column. If you take that 1 and place it there, you get 1. And if you put this two in that column, you get seven. And if you put that one in there, you get seven. And of course you're left with the initial one. So you do in fact get 1,771,561. There's lots of other weird, weird patterns in this triangle. Um, but I think probably the neatest one is, remember, since we're talking about sequence, it's a nice way to wrap up the, the sequence talk here, um, is um, if you tilt your head 45 degrees to the left a little bit, um, and what I want you to do is look at the diagonals here. And what I'm going to look at is um, just this diagonal here. So that gives me, I'll use that up there, one. And if I look at this diagonal, that gives me a one. And now if I go through this one, I get one plus one, which is two. And if I go through this diagonal, I get one plus two, which is three. And if I go through this diagonal, I get one plus three is four plus one is five. Let's just do one more here. Uh, one plus four is five, plus three is eight. Holy sugar lumps. Um, so that's super cool. Um, so if you know, remember what we talked about earlier, that's actually the uh, Fibonacci uh, sequence. So this triangle has so many weird, seemingly unrelated topics kind of in there. Um, so uh, I just like to end that off for our sequences. Um, that's definitely kind of a different one. But this is actually more of a recursive um, uh, sequence here. So the Pascal's triangle has lots of relationships to binomial expansion, uh, probability, distribution, um, and uh, a whole bunch of other areas of mathematics, actually. Um, but I'll leave you with that. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this video and um, uh, do some homework questions. So I'm going to sign off here.